Hello Aggies, and welcome to New Mexico State University. My name is Michael Ray. I'm the director of the American Indian program here. We want to welcome you to our campus, whether it be online or in person. And we know some of you are at home right now, so I want to welcome you to New Mexico State University from my home here in Casablanca on the Laguna Pueblo. So we just want to say welcome. We look forward to you being on campus. We look forward to meeting you through, whether it be digitally, on the phone, or via some of our Zoom sessions but we always wanna make sure that you feel that you have your community away from home community while you're here on our campus. As many of you are in your home communities right now, you have that great opportunity to be with your family. We wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to be welcomed by our administrators, our departments, our faculty, and the staff that you're gonna be with, as well as those student organizations that'll help guide through your academic career. But as I mentioned, we're not only welcoming you here, but we are also welcoming you here from the American Indian Student Center on campus. So as we go through our welcome back, we just wanna make sure that you feel that you have your community away from home community here at New Mexico State University. So we'll start off with Dr. Dan Arvisu, Chancellor for the New Mexico State University System. Hi everyone, my name is Dan Arvizu. I'm the Chancellor here at New Mexico State University. Uh, and on behalf of the entire NMSU systems faculty and staff, I wanna welcome our American Indian students. Uh, you've been an outstanding choice in selecting New Mexico State University. And uh, it's one that I feel uh, is, is, is quite valuable because frankly, uh, many, many years ago, I made that same choice. And it has served me well uh, during all that time. Um, when I was a student here, I did not know what a chancellor or a president would do. Um, and so I wanted to, to uh, give you a little bit of, uh, of a background on, on what we're about as, uh, as I described a little bit about what NMSU is about. So the chancellor and the, uh, and the president of each of our campuses um, are the key executives that are committed to ensure that New Mexico State University and its, with its designations as a land grant university, Hispanic serving and space man institution is successful for the long term, for the future. And so our focus is on ensuring the well-being of this institution for, for many years to come. Uh, we have three primary elements of our strategic plan and our mission objectives. Uh, and those focus on student success, ensuring that our students are well prepared for the future to perform well into the marketplace, um, to do research, research that can uh, also have national and global implications, but local uh, implications as well, and to ensure that we are able to continue to promote the well-being of our society. And the third primary area is to do outreach and extension uh, in the communities in which we serve. And that is uh, more and more important these days with so many communities being challenged uh, both uh, health-wise and financially by the pandemic that we've all experienced. So with those as the, as the, uh, as the primary focus areas of our institution, um, I wanna make sure that you know that we are here to serve uh, you and to help you on your journey. And we look forward to seeing you and watching all of you grow academically and to be able to be successful in your academic journey so that you can be um, successful as you embark on careers uh, to do great things both for the state of New Mexico, for your families, and for society in general. So with all of that, I welcome you all to New Mexico State University. I congratulate you on the choice, and I look forward to seeing you around campus as time goes on. Go Aggies. Thank you, Chancellor Arvisu, for sharing those words with our students. We will now go to President of New Mexico State University, Las Cruces Campus, Dr. John Floros, to welcome you to New Mexico State University. Hello, future Aggies. Uh, I want to welcome you to New Mexico State University. I want to welcome you to this beautiful campus. And I have just a few words for you. This is a special university. It's not just like any other university you will ever be. Uh, this is a land-grant university, which means we were created to educate the public, the masses, most of the people that cannot go to the Ivy Leagues, to educate everybody, regardless of race, of sex, of color of skin, of anything, and you will always be welcome here. The second thing I wanted to, to say is that this university caters to all of our students, and the majority of our students are minorities, underrepresented groups of people. And we try to educate everybody and to help everybody succeed. Now, you're beginning a journey that it's going to last several years. It's not going to be easy. If somebody told you it's going to be easy, it's not true. You're going to have to work very hard, particularly you 
that come from a background that's a little different. You may not feel well about this place at the beginning, but stick to it. We have a lot of good people here to help you. And if you put the work in, we, we will succeed together and you will succeed uh, together with us. We can help you help yourself and succeed. The key point here is that it's hard, but it's doable. Many others have done it before you. Many more will do after you. And when you do it, when you get through it and you look back, you will be thankful for the time that you spend here. And primarily, you will be thankful for the degree that you have. Because once you graduate, and you have to graduate, once you graduate, you will have the tools to not only help yourself, your family, and your community, but to help a lot more people. So a degree is imperative. Studies are imperative. Keep working hard. Ask for help when you need it. Help others when they need help from you. We're one, all of us one big community. I want you to feel at home here at NMSU, and I want you to be bold about your decisions, to work hard, to be kind to yourself and to others, and to succeed. So welcome to NMSU, and good luck to all of you. I'm looking forward to meet you in, in person one of these days around campus. Go Aggies. Thank you very much, President Floros. We will now hear from our provost, Provost Carol Parker. Well, thank you so much and, and greetings everyone and welcome to New Mexico State University. We are so pleased that you are here with us this year. And I know you are going to have a wonderful experience and um, will thrive here at NMSU, especially uh, with the help of individuals like um, Director Ray, who uh, is just doing such a fabulous job for us with programs for our students, uh, programs like this. So um, I'll get right to it. The question is, what exactly is the provost? Um, interestingly enough, it originally was a military expression. Uh, a provost was the person who sort of um, garrisoned the, the soldiers to make sure that they had all of their supplies and all of the logistics were in place. Uh, in some ways, it still is like that, the role of a provost. Of course, not in the military environment, but um, my, my role is that of the, the um, head of all of the academic programs. I'm the, the head academic officer. Um, in that regard, I'm responsible for the quality and the integrity of all of our academic programs and the quality and credentials and knowledge and experience of all of the faculty who deliver those programs. And that means that uh, I have to make sure that um, our almost 900 faculty here on the Las Cruces campus and the almost 300 faculty that are across our four branches meet the standards uh, to teach. And the standard uh, is set by the um, Higher Learning Commission. They are our accreditor and also by the state of New Mexico. So every degree that you receive here will have been endorsed by the state and will be delivered according to the standards of our accreditor. And uh, I also um, oversee the processes for recruiting and hiring and retention efforts for faculty. Um, I ensure that we are able to uh, assess that you are um, receiving the, uh, the education that we have promised you. Um, I oversee the process by which the degrees themselves are put together, how, how, they, are, how they create a curriculum, if you will. And also that I oversee the process by which we annually, at a minimum, um, review the work our faculty do. So that's how we assure that they remain at the, the top of their field, 
that their expertise is very high. Um, the vast majority of our faculty have a terminal degree, the highest degree you can get in a field. Uh, most often that is a PhD. So um, that's pretty much how I spend my day. Uh, a lot of meetings uh, and um, I work really through others. It's impossible to, uh, to oversee more than 150 degrees and uh, on main campus and 900 faculty, as I said, uh, myself. So I work through others. Primarily, I work through the deans of the colleges. The, the deans of the colleges report to me. So while um, most of your day-to-day -day experience in the classroom is the outcome of this work, you don't usually interact too much uh, directly with my office. You're much more likely to be interacting with the departments and the colleges. However, I do collaborate a great deal with our Vice President for Student Success and our Dean of Students. Um, I am always uh, working and uh, uh, encouraging the faculty role in student success, if you will, uh, because really what happens in the classroom is the, the single most uh, impactful thing that we can do to to transmit knowledge to you, to our students, as you pursue your studies. So we're always working on improving the outcomes in the classroom instruction. So um, that in a nutshell is what the provost office is for, uh, as I said, to ensure the quality of the academic programs and the faculty who teach them. And, um, that's pretty much uh, it in a nutshell. And I look forward to seeing you around campus, hopefully. I, this semester is a little unusual, of course, um, but I it, it certainly look forward to hearing of your accomplishments. Um, Director Ray keeps us informed of all of the great work that you do. So uh, thank you again for coming to New Mexico State and I wish you the very best of luck this fall and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the stage at graduation someday. Thanks for those words Provost Parker. We are now going to be hearing from Dr. Ruth Johnston who serves as the Vice Chancellor for the NMSU system. Thank you and welcome students, welcome Aggies. Um, I'm starting my second year at NMSU. Uh, very excited to be here and working really hard in this new unusual way that we're uh, learning, educating, living. Um, and so I just wanted to say a few things about what I do because it's a new role uh, starting last year and it's really uh, to help the system become more effective and better serve our students and help achieve our LEADS 2025 goals. I'm the co-lead of the Building a Robust University System. And with that, what we're trying to do is improve our processes and reduce a lot of the headaches for all of you students in terms of uh, student services, in terms of uh, manipulating around the campus, around improving our support, um, in terms of getting reimbursements, anything to do with your student life outside of the classroom. Uh, so a couple things also that you're interested in, I expect, and one of those is COVID. And so I am also serving as the COVID-19 return to campus officer. And as a result, I'm working with a very large team of faculty and staff and uh, interacting with uh, everybody who relates to students to try to make NMSU the safest place it possibly can be for those who actually are coming onto campus or using the campus services or maybe taking hybrid classes or even uh, not coming to class at all and just doing online. So we're uh, together, these 40 people, we just got off the Zoom uh, for our weekly call, talk about everything from testing to uh, the self checks that we want everybody to do every day uh, to make sure that they're safe, uh, really promoting the face masks, and it could be that if you're wandering campus and I'm wandering campus and I see somebody who doesn't have their mask on, I may say, hey, remember, we're, we're protecting each other. Do you need a mask? Uh, so those kinds of things are very important. And if you have questions about COVID, COVID-19 
at nmsu.edu is a place that you can send questions. Um, and we're very fast to respond to provide whatever we can do to make being an Aggie and getting educated the best possible experience in this very odd time. A couple other things uh, that you might want to know, and then I'll uh, be happy to talk with any of you either by Zoom or by phone or by email at any time, um, is that we are going through some pretty severe budget times. And so over the next few months, we have to look at how we're spending our money, uh, at, especially as it's aligned to our strategic goals, um, and make sure that uh, we can offer the best education at the best price for all of you, given uh, the severe budget issues uh, that we're gonna be working with. So you'll probably hear a little bit about that uh, through Hotline or some of the other um, communications that you may get through Michael or Brittany or other people. And finally, last year I was able to go on a hike uh, with the uh, American Indian students as well as the Black students, and I hope that we'll be able to do that again. It was Dripping Springs, and it was a wonderful day, a wonderful time, and I love getting out there, and hopefully you do too, and I'll be able to do it with you at some point. So thank you. Welcome, Aggies. It's Ruth J at nmsu.edu. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Johnston. We are now going to be hearing from Dr. Monica Torres, who serves as the president of the Donna Anna Community College. Well, I'm so happy to be here, and, and I just want to welcome all the students to, um, to university and community college education. It's hard to say to welcome you to campus. I suspect some of you are here and some of you are, are at a distance, but, but welcome to the 2021-2021 uh, school year. Um, we're happy to have you. I, I just want to talk a little bit about, about uh, what we do at DACC. We, we basically have four missions. We, we do college education. We do credit classes. Uh, and we do credit classes in two ways. Some people choose to start their four-year degree at, at a community college, and, and we offer those courses and those programs. But we also offer career technical education courses, so welding and auto and HVAC and a number of programs that, that people are interested in, in getting an education and then moving into the workforce. But we also do a, a number of other things. We, we help small businesses grow. Uh, we help uh, folks get their GEDs if that's where they are in their educational path. We, we do those sorts of things. But, but one of the things that's, I think, critical to what Michael was talking about is the idea that DACC and NMSU have a relationship. Um, I mean, we're clearly in the same system. We are one of the branch campuses for, for the university. Um, and uh, it's, we've created a lot of kind of pathways and articulated programs over the course of the years um, to, to ensure that students get services they need. Um, it is really important, and I think Michael, uh, Michael has been fabulous about reaching out to us and saying, hey, we've got some students who are working at DACC um, who are interested in the American Indian program or who are, who are using our services and working with us. Um, can, can you help them? We're, we're happy. Uh, you know, our goal is the same as Michael's goal, and that is to create an environment where you can succeed. And so we are willing to uh, do whatever we need to to help you access the services and resources you need um, and, to, and to create spaces where, where you can meet with, with other students. Um, and so um, I'm, I guess one of the things I would say, there are two things. One of the things I would say is that being successful at college takes hard work, but you, you know that and, and uh, you're, you're ready to do that. But the second thing that I think is more important in this conversation is that, is that being successful in college takes a network of people who have your back, who are standing behind you, who are supporting you, who are helping you find the information and the resources you need to succeed. Because when I look around at people I know who are successful, they've all had that. And so one of the things I love about being at DACC is that we're part of that network. We're part of your network. Michael and the American Indian program is part of your network and that we can connect you to, to our networks to, to help you succeed. And, and so if, if you have an issue and you don't feel like you can get an answer at DACC from, from, from someone, I invite you to call me. Find my information on the website. Call me. We will work uh, at our campus and with Michael to get you the answers and the support you need. Thank you for those kind words, Dr. Torres. Next, we're going to be hearing from our Vice President for Research and the Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Luis Cifuentes. Well, thank you, Michael. Uh, as, as Michael said, my name is Luis Cifuentes, and I'm the Vice President for Research and the Dean of the Graduate School. I welcome you to New Mexico State University, to the 2020 academic year, and to the fall semester. I want to spend just a few moments explaining who we are and how you can best utilize our office. 
So we are the Office of the Vice President for Research and the Graduate School. The mission of the Office of the Vice President for Research is to advance university success in research, in scholarship and creative activity through the exemplary service to the faculty, staff, and of course, to you, the students. The mission of the Graduate School is to enrich the lives of graduate students from all walks of life, all kinds of diversity through transforming experiences that can provide them, you, the capability to change the world for a greater good. So if you're an undergraduate student, what you may be interested in uh, that relates to the Office of the Vice President for Research is competing for fellowships or travel grants or getting some kind of undergraduate research experience. If you're a graduate student, you would also go to the Office of the Vice President for Research if you're interested in fellowships and stipends and funding for research. But you would go to the graduate school when you have questions about the catalog, registration, scholarship forms, thesis defenses, graduating, etc. But let me say something. Before you come to the Office of the Vice President for Research or to the graduate office, talk to your advisors first. Talk to somebody, a faculty member, another student you know well, and even in some cases, maybe even go to your department head. But make sure that you first ask your question closest to you, to where you are, before you come to our office, either in the Vice President for Research's area or the graduate school. But if you're not getting the answers you need, that's when you come to us. If you want to contact the Vice President for Research directly, send an email to ovpr at nmsu.edu. And if you want to contact the grant school, send an email to gradinfo at nmsu.edu. We are here to make you successful. We hope you have a great semester. We understand this is a very unusual and difficult time we're here to help. Thank you for choosing New Mexico State University. Hi, everybody. As I was editing this, I realized that we asked our administrators, if you could tell yourself some words of advice from your hindsight, looking back, what would you be wanting to say? Here's a little bit of what some of our administrators were able to talk about when it comes to what they wish somebody told them, or maybe what they wish that they were able to do during their starting point. There's a lot of things people don't know about me. One of the things is that I left home when I was 11 and a half and I was on my own since then. Uh, a lot of people helped me along the way but there are always a few people that you can always count on and those people you have to ha have to hold on to. Those are the mentors, those are the advisors, those are the people that are extra kind to you and they're always there to help you. If it wasn't for those people I wouldn't be here today. So look for those people, find those people, stick close to them because they will help you to get through some tough times. There will always be reasons why we fail and we will all, we'll all have failed. People will fail again, but we always need some help here and there from somebody to pick us back up and put us in our way. So the most valuable advice I have ever gotten is to get a mentor or two or three and really pay attention to what they say. Do the things that you have to do and get as much help as you can from mentors, from advisors, from colleagues, from other students, from our faculty, our staff. We have plenty of people to help you. That's a great question. You know, actually, I have thought about that. Um, I was a first generation student. Um, my, my father had an eighth grade education and my mother has a GED. And uh, I was not really expected to go to college. I, in fact, my first job after high school graduation, I was working in an auto parts factory in Michigan where I grew up. And I uh, respect and appreciate the hard work of individuals like my 
father and mother who were farmers and individuals who work very hard uh, to provide for their family with jobs such as factory jobs. And um, I nevertheless really, um, I wanted to um, do more intellectually. Um, I, I felt I could achieve more and I wanted to push myself to do that. So I did uh, then endeavor to go to college um, and I started at a community college and my approach to college was pretty transactional, meaning I go to college, I take my class, I get my grade, I graduate, I get a job. So I, I approached it that way. I, I did not appreciate two main things. Um, the, it, it's so important that you engage with the people you will meet at a university. That is really the, the secret of, of getting a transformative education, to make those connections, to find mentors, um, to build a network. So if you approach college as a transactional experience, you miss out on that. And I was commuting, I, was, I worked full time going to college. So um, I think I missed out a lot. I mean, that was partly my own shyness. I never really felt like I fit in at college. I always thought I was sort of the outlier because um, you know, my family had not gone to college and I didn't know how to navigate college. So as I said, I just sort of went at it transactionally. Um, so I regret that. I mean, I think I made it more challenging for myself because the more you reach out, the more you understand how to navigate and uh, people will help you and they want to help you. It's not an imposition to ask for help. And, and that's the second thing that I would emphasize, the importance of mentorship. In my case, um, I was working, as I said, and um, I was trying to finish college. And back then, they didn't have online. So I had, would have to get into my car and drive to try to take a class in the middle of the day. And then you're trying to get to the upper, upper classes. You, you can't take classes in the evening. You can't still keep going to community college so that you, know, you can work and balance your schedule. And I had to go to those day classes at the university. So my boss um, helped me do that. She said, you can make up the time and just finish your courses. So I would get up in the middle of the day and I would go take my class at the university. If she had not let me do that, I never would have finished my degree. It took me almost 10 years to do it as it was. Um, again, because I didn't really know how to do it faster. I, I made mistakes, you know, I, I took courses that then didn't apply to my degree. I kind of did everything that we know now today is not the most efficient way to do it. Uh, and so, you know, the, the importance of, of the mentor, of, of having someone to help you with this process, um, it is so important. Just like I said, the experience of, of connecting with people, building a community, around your university life is what will transform you and give you incredible opportunities. Get to know as many people as you possibly can outside of your comfort zone. Uh, don't just hang around with the people that you know. Just experience the amazing diversity of our student body, our faculty, our staff, but also the various services that we all have. Uh, there's so much going on. Um, so it's, it's easy to kind of hang out with the people that you know and, and the activities you normally do, but take advantage of the whole. Walk that campus. Go see the animals. Uh, it's, I, I love seeing it throughout the year, and the campus is absolutely beautiful. Make sure you, well, you get to the pond because your building is near the pond, but uh, take advantage of, of everything we've got. You know, when I started my undergraduate degree, I was really shy. 
um, it was almost painful for me to go to faculty's office hours and, and talk with them. And so I, I didn't like to do that. Um, and so, I, and so I didn't take advantage of that for the first couple of years of, of my college career. Um, at, as I, as I progressed in my academic degree, what I did do is I did find people who could help me. And I guess that's why I emphasize this idea of network is that finding people who can help you just makes all the difference in, in the world. And, and I would say that one of the ways often, and, and this is where I, you have to listen to people, right? You have to hear what faculty might say to you. And one faculty member said something to me and I realized that I had heard it before, but I hadn't internalized it. One faculty member said to me at the end of my undergraduate degree, um, have you thought about graduate school? And I had not. And it was the first time I kind of opened up to say, oh, here's some, somebody who's in my corner who might help me do this. And in fact, she helped me apply to graduate school and, and helped, helped me get in. So, so I think that, that trying to find someone that will help you, that you feel comfortable with to access the resources, that's the best advice I can, I can give anybody. Because, because um, colleges and universities, they're their own culture, right? They've got their, we've got our own rules, we got our own jargon, um, we've got our own structures. It, it's a culture. And so it's, it's like learning a culture. And so find somebody who can help you understand what the college or university culture is all about. Well, in my case, I was, I was pretty privileged growing up and uh, I got the opportunity to go to uh, a, a very nice uh, liberal arts school on the East Coast. And uh, if I had it to do all over again, to be honest with you, I would work harder than I did back then. But that's the beauty of New Mexico State University. Our students are special. They come here to work hard and to get an education. And, and every time I see that uh, they're truly here to take advantage of an opportunity, it just, uh, it just makes me so proud to be here at New Mexico State University. And we thank you for joining us for this first part of the Welcome Back. We're gonna be uploading our second part here very soon but you will probably have access to that right now. So go ahead and click on to the next area and we will see you soon.